It would have never crossed my mind that at 34 years old, I would have stage four colorectal cancer. Never in a million years. And I just think it's so, so important to spread awareness to people that this is happening in our generation and it's happening younger. You know, the colonoscopy um, requirement just got moved to age 45, but that wouldn't help somebody like me, you know, who was 34. So I just think we need to spread awareness that it is happening to a ton of people in their 30s. Started the process and uh, did the PSA numbers and the PSA level from my baseline when I was younger uh, to where it was when I had originally tested early May and then in later May, uh, I jumped up two points. So I knew something was up. And Dr. Wilson kind of said, we're gonna have to do some more testing, you know, but it sounds like, you know, we need to be aware of this, you know. I actually had the opportunity to have it looked at two years prior, but um, I decided not to because I was 32 and I thought 32 year olds don't get mammograms, I'll be fine. Fast forward to two years later, I noticed that the area had changed and so I brought it to my OBGYN's attention when I had my regular checkup and she recognized, yeah, I feel what you're feeling. It does feel different. Let's get it checked out just in case. It was because he had a physical and at the end of the physical, she said there's a new program starting up and it's for um, early screening for those who Smoke. may, yeah, smokers. And Gary's been a smoker since he was a teenager. So she said, it's perfect for you. So we thought, okay, why not? We went over and they took his first CT scan. I was surprised because I didn't at that time ever think I could get lung cancer. So certainly people that don't smoke can get lung cancer. We have a history of lung cancer on both sides of my family with my mom and dad. Being mindful of my uh, family history, my dad, brother, suffering from prostate cancer. And um, so I knew I had to kind of move on this a little bit. You know, like I said, I just retired. I got more time than I know what to do with. So I was able to start the testing procedure and uh, be diagnosed uh, with stage two cancer after a couple tests and a, and a, a biopsy. Well, sure enough, not even 24 hours later, I got a phone call and it was the, um, the doctor's office letting me know that I did actually have cancer. So when you hear that word cancer, it just, it changes things. And I sat there for a good 20, 30 minutes, just kind of by myself in the dining room thinking, okay, let's not think the worst. Let's not Google this stuff. Let's just, uh, let's, let's move forward and figure out what's going on here. Because the antibiotics weren't working, I was feeling worse. So I got with my primary care and he gave me some more antibiotics that he wanted to try. So another three or four days went by and now I was feeling even worse. I was barely able to get out of bed. I couldn't work out at all. And my wife kept telling me, you need to go to the hospital, you need to go to the hospital. So finally I did. Because we didn't think it was going to be anything. But because he smoked for so long, it was silly to ignore it. We thought just in case, probably not but just in case we should do that surgery first. So fortunately we did, and it was a surprise. And with this cancer that I had, I found it early. It was stage one because I got my mammograms and because of when I caught it and my age, there are different options. And after about 45 minutes, uh, he called me over to look at the blown up um, scan and he showed me that um, it was cancer because it was um, spreading in internally. So I didn't have any signs on my skin about melanoma. I mean, I'm fair skin, I have some like marks and stuff, and they looked at my whole body and they're like, there's really nothing that can, no signs that it was actually like melanoma. Because they asked me all kinds of questions about how it could, how it could have, what could have caused it. So I was st stage zero when I was initially diagnosed. When they did the mastectomy, they did find a 0.5 half a millimeter of, of invasive cancer. So that upgraded me to stage one. And with that, I am triple positive, hormone positive, as well as HER2 positive. And because of that, I was thinking, all right, I'm not gonna need chemo. I'm not gonna have to do all this additional treatment. But my surgical oncologist said, well, let's get you connected with Dr. Petty. In the service, I 
deployed twice, and my job required me to work outside up to 12 hours a day, six days a week. So when you're deployed for four months, five months, six months, and you're outside that much, and the military, they give you protective equipment, but they don't give you sunscreen, sunblock. So you have to try to remember to buy that stuff on your own. Well, when you're out there, you don't think about that stuff. And again, we're all young and in shape, and we don't, you think you're immune to everything, and you're not. And we also had to, we also worked around burn pits in Kandahar. So I think, between, with, with all that going on, they think that's what most likely caused it. The really amazing thing to me was that when he removed it, even though I was a stage one, it was had gone through the lining of my lungs and it had I had a little touch of adenoma tumor in there too. It was mostly BAC and then it had some aggressive adenoma. And it had eaten through the pleural and was right abut to go out into my chest cavity and it was a butt to that little membrane that separates your lungs from your chest cavity. And so within, who knows, a day, two weeks, I could have been stage four and done. So that is the miracle here, really, is that he called it, he didn't say wait and see in another, another few years, he called it, got it out right in time, or I wouldn't be here. Be able to have the surgery, had my prostate gland removed uh, in July, here we are in October, I'm still dancing. Things are good. I went from diagnosis to cancer-free in 50 days because I got my mammogram. And people need to be aware of that and they need to, they need to go to the doctor and they need to um, look for symptoms. Um, they need to be aware of those things and go get checked if something seems off. It, you know, people just need to be aware that colorectal cancer is not a disease for older people anymore. It is, it is happening younger and younger these days. And if it can happen to somebody like me, it can happen to anybody. Just get screens. Do it now. Don't waste time. There's no downside to finding out. No. I mean, the sooner you find out, the better. And to not go because you're afraid of hearing it doesn't make sense. The faster they catch it, the better your chances. It took me a lot to go to a hospital. I would just try to fight through everything. but. Now, I would say go get checked as soon as possible. Talk to your doctor about your concerns because if, if this was caught any later, I might not have made it. And the fact that it was stage four, if I wasn't in the condition I was in, my body wouldn't have gotten through it. And if I wasn't healthy, I think uh, it would have been too weak to fight all that that was going on. You guys are my heroes. I, uh, <laughs> excuse me, I, uh, I just cannot say enough about the, uh, the involvement and the uh, empathy and the follow through and the skill level that you, you must possess. That's, that's got to be God given. And I thank you. Thank you. I love you. It's just the trust factor. So have trust in the medical team. If you find you don't have it, then you need to find one that you do. You need to have trust because your life really is in their hands. So I would say that the most important thing to me has been positivity. Whether it's positivity you know, gained from being out in nature or positivity of a great support group of friends and family or just from your faith. But if you stay positive, you can get through it. And I do believe that if God takes you to it, he'll get you through it.